I'm Bron Barton from the South Gippsland Beekeepers. Today I will be continuing our Q&A video series in ISO and I'm going to be talking to Steve Lovey. Uh, Steve is an amateur beekeeper, he's a club member as you all probably know. He has just a few hives and he's going to be discussing with me today how he manages the hives and just a few of the jobs that he does over the winter time. So here we go. Thanks for coming, Stu. Pleasure, Ron. How long have you been keeping bees? Oh, I've been keeping bees since about uh, the early 90s, probably around 1991, 92. Yeah. I uh, got my first hive. Yeah. And what was it that made you get bees in the first place? Uh, when I was uh, at school, I used to go down and help um, a couple on the farm, and they had a couple of hives. And they used to have these big cream can full of honey. And it left an impression on me. No, I imagine so. So I was always going to have bees. And actually my lifestyle is very similar to these, you know, growing veggies and stuff and fruit. Um, so yeah, that's a, the reason I got into bees. They left an impression on me. So, Steve, uh, you have how many hives? I have five hives. Yes, I have... Two in, no, three in Kumara and two in uh, Langatha. And I also look after uh, friends in Langatha North. Okay. And the yeah. most productive of those hives would be where? Um, Langatha and definitely Langatha North. Okay. Yeah. And when on in a good season, how much honey would you get? Um, oh, that would vary. Probably, if I can look at around 20 kilos a hive, I'd be very happy, but I don't always achieve that. Okay. Mm. And that's just for your own use, that honey? You pretty much so, yes. Yeah. And uh, neighbours, family oh. and neighbours, yes. Okay. <laughs> very good. <laughs> I keep them uh, in honey. Yep. And so when you, um, when you extract your honey, do you, do you have like a special place where you do that? Yeah, in the kitchen. Oh, okay. Mm. Yeah. Yes. All right. I have the perspex on top of the extractor now. I've progressed a little bit with my extractor, and it, it's a lot easier, yes. Um, it doesn't spray everywhere. Okay. So Debbie's a lot happier. Yes. Yes. I, I, I may do everything in the kitchen. I heard a rumour that your wife is the cleaner upper. Pretty much so, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very good. Yeah, we've got it worked out well. Do you say the Coon Warra hives aren't? as flash as the other ones in honey production? No, I've been there about eight years and I haven't had a very good year every year. It's not that um, productive. Yeah. So I'll, um, I'll probably keep one there, requeen it, and just to see whether it's worth keeping them there. But um, like this year, I got two extractions out of my hives at Langatha and Langatha North but I only got the one out at Kumara. And that's been a pattern, so... Yeah, right through. Yeah, mm. so it's not just a one-off. No, and I don't know whether it's... Maybe there's a lot of competition out there. I don't know, but mm. you look at it and you think it would be um, a wonderful spot. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you'll be thinking about moving them? Oh, yeah, I'll have to. Mm. Yeah. So to the same place the others are, or are you looking yeah, somewhere I'll, different? Yeah, I'll probably... Um, Lang of the North, I'd like to maybe put a couple of mine out there as well. Yeah, um, okay. That's because it's very productive out there. So with the lack of productivity, I suppose, um, lack of a better term, have you requeened to try and remedy that? I, I did one hive, yep, and even it didn't do as well as it was busy. You know, the hive was very strong, but it's still that when you winter them down, you normally get another extraction, but I didn't get a lot out of the strong hive there either. Mm. So, did you have to feed them at all? Um, I, uh, no, I haven't because when I winter them down, I make sure they've got plenty of food. I tend to leave them with a minimum of six frames because mm. I winter down to two boxes. What about swarming? Do you find that's an issue? Um, they have swarmed on the odd occasion, but and I think your bees tend to swarm more than you think they do. Yes, when you don't, you're not there all day. So we're coming into winter now. Well, we're well and truly into winter now. 
um, what do you do over the winter months? Do you just leave the bees to themselves or do you have you got a bit of a plan for what you do over winter? Well, I have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> Whether I achieve that plan is another thing, but I um, what I try and do over winter, especially on rainy days because there's nothing better than getting in your shed, having the podcast on or whatever. And um, I just look at my, fr my frames need um, working on, um, the, my boxes if they need repairing, just maintenance. I try and get that. I try and do that before the season starts, but a lot of times it doesn't happen. But I've started this year on a good note. I, after winting my bees down, I actually put the frames in groups of the frames that I don't need to touch. That I've um, I've put them in the given them the freezer treatment, and I've put them in their groups so I know that they are right. And the frames that I need to replace the foundation or um, retention the wires, or whatever. Um, I've actually put them in their little group. So, come a wet day, I can whip in there and they'll start working on the frames and so forth. Okay, so you'll be organised in spring. Yes, yeah, that in theory. That's the theory. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Fair enough. Yeah, that's what I plan to do. But um... okay, do you? I suppose because you, as you say, you you you're harvesting, you know, twenty, forty, maybe sixty kilos a, a season. Um, do you ever keep any frames um, in case you need them in the winter? Yes. To give back to the bees? Yeah, some of the ones there, um, that when I winter they I have left over that are not fully capped and that I tend to um, keep them just in case I need to put them back over winter. But and I also in winter I'll go around and just check a couple of hives if I think they might be a little bit light on. Um, and after reading Pete's article, I'm going to try, if I need to feed them, I'm going to try um, sugar, mm. not the um, the mix, just the sugar yeah. in okay. the top. So I need to feed this year. So do you do you have just thinking with um, high with frames that you have a, have a bit of honey in them, yep. and you're going to store them? What's the uh, the best way of dealing with them once you get them out of the Hive if you're planning on giving them back to the bees? Well, I give them all the freeze treatment so to avoid the wax moth. Mm -hmm. um, now, people are saying that they don't, if they candy, the bees tend to don't like it. Um, I'm not sure whether that's right or not, but um, I do. Some of the ones I'll, I'll keep out if I know I'm going to have to put them back in. Um, not to give them that freeze treatment, but majority of mine, I do freeze them and then I'll put them in the hive if need be. And do you put them back into the same hive? That's what I've done this year. I've actually, um, with the biosecurity, and now that I've got, I've discovered a hive beetle in one of my hives. Um, I am, I do normally put them, I, I used to put them in different, different hives, but what I'm going to do now is just stick them to their yard so... Langatha North will have theirs, Langatha will have theirs, and Coomara will have theirs. When you say you had found beetle, mm. I presume it wasn't just one? Well, I only saw one. Okay. Yeah, and I, I saw it when I was winting them down. So um, I'm hoping, because I haven't sort of had them before, that I was aware of. Um, so I'm hoping that over winter, with the cold, they mightn't get too much damage, and then I'll have to address it. Coming to spring, and what uh, what aspect do you, whereabouts do you have those bees? Are they in a big, you know, open area, or whereabouts are those hives? We're at the ones with the beetle. The beetle. Uh, they're in um, just in my back paddock, yeah, next to the dam. Out in the open. So I've lifted them up a bit higher. Yeah, out in the open. Yeah, mm. I've lifted them up a bit higher. Um, whether that makes any difference, I don't know. Um, but yeah, they're out in the open. Mm. I dare say if I put beetle traps in there, I'll probably find mm. the, whole, the whole three of them will probably have, have the beetle. Mm. Possibly, yes. yes. Probably not a bad idea yeah. to check that out. So I'll have to um, yeah, do that mm. when it warms up a bit. And so what's your plan for, um, for spring? For spring? For spring. 
Uh, well, I'll look. Mine's a kumwa. I'll probably need to uh, probably requeen a couple of hives. Have you? You haven't ordered queen yet? Not yet. No. Any idea where you're ordering your queen from? Um, well, I have got the few that I have had. I've got within the club. Yep. There. Yeah, so, um, and I know Pete Kate House has queens. We get queens through Pete. Yeah. So. Um, if I need a queen, I'll just yeah, get them, try to get them internally within the club, if I can. Yeah. Because um, I got one off Rob Franson a couple of years ago, and it was very good. Yeah. Very yeah. impressed with it. Perhaps we need to speak to Rob Franson about um, taking it up again. Yes. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes. They're probably a bit cheaper too. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. Mm. I think it cost me 25 I think. But, yeah. Did... The queen that you got, was it a marked queen? Off Rob, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Did you find that made a, a big difference in, in trying to find her? It certainly does. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I actually split that hive this year and let them create their own queen. Yeah. And, yeah, you do have to search a lot harder. Mm. And even that was in one box, so mm. I find it a little difficult sometimes to find a queen. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so I think it's rather tempting to... Um, Use one of the catches and, and mark your own queen. Yeah, I'd be worried I was going to squash it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, well, in a recent article, Rob Franson was saying that you uh, you can you need to get the queen used to being handled. And he said you can hold her, telling us how to hold her by the thorax and be gentle with her. And, mm -hmm. and I thought, well, yes, but the problem is not with the queen necessarily as with the other bees. They can tend to get a bit snaky. When you're mucking around with their with queen, her, yeah, different smells and. Yeah. <laughs> but Rob, when I went and picked it up, he just took it out of the hive, mm. and uh, he said, "You can." He asked, suggested I pick it up first. And I said, "No, no. <laughs> I don't want to squash it." Mm. Um, so he just picked it up, yeah, and uh, just marked it, and put it in the cage, and mm. I brought it home. Mm. Yeah. And what about for? Um, do you do you actually have a plan for swarm prevention? Something that you do every year? Um, I like to give them um, plenty of room. Yeah, I think um, because I say they probably do swarm and you don't know, but I, I think if you can give them plenty of room, that hopefully they'll uh, like to stay. So do you do you move frames around or do you just put a box on top? Uh, I would, well, when I um, after winter, I'd sit, I'd go in and have a look at the hive, and clean it up a little bit, make sure that it's everything's okay in there. And then when they are getting the numbers are increasing, yes, I'll just put another box on. I don't use a queen excluder, um, whether that's good or bad, but that's just the way I, I do things. And you uh, never find that's a problem with you? No, because I run two brood boxes, and normally when you want to start extracting, um, that sometimes a queen will lay in the couple of frames in the top box, the third box. But by the time you extract, once they've hatched out, the bees don't uh, let her come back up there again. Mm. So, um, unless it's a really good queen. Um, but yeah, no, I don't have any troubles with that. I don't, not, I'm not extracting um, brood mm. with it. Okay. So. And do you have a uh, water source nearby or do you have to provide water for them? No, I've got uh, water. Oh, good worries. Got the dam. And Langatha North has got a dam. And Langatha is, I, if it's really hot weather, I will put a little bit of water there, but they have a trough not that far, far away mm. from there. Okay. And that's, this is digressing from winter care, but I was just wondering, in summer, really hot days, do you do anything to protect your bees on a really hot day? No, because all of mine are in shade in the afternoon. Okay. Now, whether that's a good thing in winter, mm. um, they get the morning sun, which I think is good, because it wakes them up that little bit earlier. Um, but yeah, in the afternoon, they're pretty much in shade. Yeah. Back to winter. Yep. So, uh, what other winter jobs do you do? Well, I, if there's anything I need to purchase, need to replace like boxes or frames or foundation. I think that's a good idea to, well, to get it 
over winter because we've got more time to assemble things and have things painted and in theory have things all ready to go come September. Fair <laughs> enough. When you paint your hive, what do you will you use a water based paint? I do use water based paint. Um, I I reckon oil based is better. And John Edmonds did say at one of our meetings that he uses oil base uh, and he finds they don't stick the boxes don't stick together using oil base because you I find with the water base you do damage your boxes a little bit by putting your hive tool under there to try and separate them and uh, they get stuck and they tend to take a little bit of box from the, the bottom one, a little bit of timber. Yeah. So once I get rid of all my water base, I'll probably try the oil base one just to see whether it does make a difference. Mm. I wonder how the bees react to the smell of that. You have to perhaps leave it for a bit longer. Maybe a bit longer, yeah. Mm. But I thought it seems John was using it. It might be, yeah. Mm, but he's, he's doing most of his. You imagine that would be um, a, the way to go. Yeah. Mm. Do you have many um, boxes and frames and things in storage? Yes, I. Um, yeah, I do have a. I suppose I have a few there. Yes, but I put them in plastic bags. You know, freeze them first. Put them in plastic bags in groups of four, and I have plastic containers that I can have the eight frames in. And I have them marked what they are. And on a, in a very good season, what would be uh, the most boxes you'd, you'd add, most supers you'd add? Uh, I normally I do three, but I have had four. These full-size supers? Yep. Yeah, Mac, um, not Mac. Um, the Queen I got from Rob Franson, I had to put four on. Yeah, because she was, yeah, quite surprising. Because mm. um, I didn't want it to swarm. No. So I just, the idea of putting more, giving them more room. Yeah. The hive split that you did yep. with uh, Rob's Queen, um, how, did the, how did the second hive go? Very good. Okay. Yeah. The, um, funny enough, the initial hive that I got the um, frames from, <clears throat> It's a Kumara, and it was the one that I didn't get a second extraction from. Um, that was with Rob's Queen? Yeah, that, that's yeah. with the original Queen. Yeah. And the one that I split, it was a five-frame split, I, it was probably about December, and I put that at Langatha, and when I wintered them down, and I have a second box on there, and when I wintered them down, I think I only put one, one frame in from the box next to it um, to get it through winter. It had filled the second box. So it's, uh, yeah, it's very strong. And what was the reason for your splitting that hive? Because of the, I was so impressed with that queen I got off Rob, I thought that I would uh, try and keep the genetics and just to see whether the daughter is as good as the mum. Um, but Rob has told me that he's found over the years that they aren't as good. Okay. Yes. But so far, it's looking very promising. Yeah. Okay. And because I don't do a lot of requeening, um, when I get a new queen and then I see how they are so, so strong, it's probably something that's always been there, but I just haven't requeened that often. But I, I have learning at our meetings that um, requeening is the way to go because um, you're getting new new blood in there and with if Varroa does come here I think it's a good way of maybe combating helping combat Varroa if you've got strong hives and even the hive beetle um, if you've got a strong hive I think it helps <laughs> well done oh, oh. sorry I thought it was this <laughs> no, it's <in> stage. <laughs> um, yeah I think it helps maintain the hive were both of those hives equally um, temperament? Were they equal temperament-wise? Uh, so far, yes. I haven't worked a lot with the, the split because um, I did it in December and I just wanted it to... I kept an eye on it to see how it was going. Um, but so far, yeah, it's 
it's all right because I've got it alongside my hive I've had since 91, 92, which I haven't requeened, and but it's I think because it's swarmed, um, the bees have actually changed colour from black to to a lighter colour, and its temperaments are picking up a bit too. So, all right. Have you ever yeah. had a hive with a really, really nasty temperament? Yes, that, <laughs> that well, it used to be my best hive. Okay. I've, I've had that since ninety two. Come from Langatha North um, School, a swarm. So you were happy to put up with those nasty little ladies because they gave you lots of honey? Well, you see, before the club started, um, I thought that was just part and parcel of it, but I've learned so much, you know, with the club and going to the meetings and talking to different beekeepers. Um, your learning is so much more enhanced with the club. So, yeah, no, I'm, uh, it's been very good, the club, yeah. for all of us, I think. Yes, I definitely, feel, yeah. definitely. Yeah. But no, it, it was my strongest hive, and I've had four boxes on that um, at when I was living in Anderson Road. But it, yeah, you didn't enjoy working it. Sometimes you just put the lid back on and say, no, I'll go next time. Yes, <laughs> that's right. I've noticed is that they get snaky as soon as you get close to the brood. Okay, and that's, okay. that's when they... Yep. That's when they take off. That's when they get really... You can certainly hear them. Yeah. The noise when you think, oh, I might need a bit more smoke. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And then you find out you've got a bit carried away and you let your smoker go down a little bit. <laughs> yes. So you're frantically puffing away. Yes. Um, I was... When we did our class, I was smoking furiously, so to speak. Not cigarettes or cigars. And um, Howard said very quietly, he said to me, I'm not particularly fond of the taste of smoked honey. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, using a bit too much. And also once we had Ron come here, very early days, to come and look at our hive because we didn't know what we were looking at. And he was, uh, he was very, very helpful. Yeah. And um, he said, I don't need much smoke. So he just does a half a puff and a half a puff and it's just... Yeah. Pretty yeah, much I try spoken. not to smoke them too much. Oh, um, you can't help it sometimes. But like, some of them, yeah, no, you, you can sort of hear them coming yeah. up. And next week, bang, bang, That's like right. that. You know. When they're banging into your veil you or, might you know, crawling up your pants. Yeah. Have you got any tricks for um, easing your back or, you know, anything like that when you're working your hive? Any any tricks to make life a bit easier for yourself? In my back. Oh, oh off on my with, back. With whatever. With yeah, the, no, I, I um, use a wheelbarrow. Okay. Yeah. Mm. I um, I have a box that I or container that I can take my frames out um, that I have in, in a wheelbarrow so I'm not bending as much. Um, may have to start looking at a few more ideals um, on the hive, not the full depth, because mm. they are becoming very heavy. Yes. Yeah. Are they eight frame? Yes. Mm. Yes, eight frame. Um, and as John Edmund said, he finds that. Two, you get more out of two ideals that tend to draw them out further and um, you tend to get more in quantity yeah. or in volume two ideals than you do one full depth. So have you had any experience with wax milk? Yes, over the years I have, especially in my early days. Um, I didn't realise how quick they could multiply, especially when it's warm. And I have this picture of my uh, youngest, is Nathan, um, out helping me um, destroy all these because in those days I didn't realize it would have been better for me to put the frames in the freezer first to kill them and then deal with the frames but I me and Nath got out on the wheelbarrow and he only lasted four frames and he took off because he was disgusted in it <laughs> he thought his old man was a bit strange <laughs> uh, strange to the normal um, yes, no, I, I was very surprised how wax moth can take over. What was the first sign? Uh, it was, the first sign was probably a week before that it was weak and it looked like it was dying out. So I thought, oh, I'm in a bit of trouble here. So because I, probably I was doing it in my lunch hour, so I thought I'll go back next week and deal with it. And I think it was a bit longer than a week. And then when I went and dealt with it, it was covered just with wax moth with the odd bee. So there was no wax moth that 
Uh, when, not when, a lot, no. Um, no, there, there wasn't actually, no. That was two weeks ago mm. beforehand. But it, mm. And then all of a sudden when I went back, yeah, it was... <laughs> Did you ever discover why why it happened? What was the cause of the weakness? Was there a queen? Yeah, uh, well, it might not have been because it was my early days of beekeeping. Oh. So it might have been queenless. Um, what time of year was it? I'm just trying to think. It was in. It was pretty warm, so it was. I think it was uh, around March, something like that. Okay. Yeah. Did you know what their stores were like? Well, I I put it down. I'm just trying to think. I put it down to one box, yeah. um, because the numbers weren't great. Mm. Um. But yeah, no. I think there was honey in there, but the, they just died out. I'd say. So there's no way of knowing which came first. Chicken or the egg? No, no. Mm. That, uh, but it's just the what it can do to your hive. Um, yeah, it was quite amazing because it was warm. Because I love warm weather too. Mm. So you burnt it. I burnt it. Burnt mm. the whole lot. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Whereas if the damage isn't too bad, you can freeze it and clean it out. Yeah. Well, I would been I because yeah. I wanted to get rid of the wire. Um, because I thought we didn't want to you know, burn the wire at that. And uh, so I just dismantled them, then I burnt them, and the box as well, just in case that was a disease. Um, but, yeah, that was... Uh, yeah, to see the grubs are... Oh, oh okay. Incredible. So there were definitely grubs in there. It oh, wasn't past no, it was just point. covered. The frame was just covered. Yeah. yeah. So I was just pushed it out, so I could take the wire out, and then I burnt the lot. Hmm. Yeah. Did you have more than one hive at that time? Uh, you yeah, had two. That was my second one that I got. So have you got any other words of wisdom or anything else you'd like to impart? Um, I suppose the, the thing that I've discovered with um, with beekeeping, and that we did a lot of reading and so forth, but just joining a club or having someone you can talk to about bees, I think it's um, priceless. Mm. You can pick up a lot of... Um, a lot of knowledge just from listening to people and talking to people. Um, and you're talking about things that you love to, love doing, the same interests as you. So I, I think that um, is a very good step in beekeeping mm. is to join a club if you can. Yes. Mm. Wise words. Mm. Thank you very much for coming along. Thanks for having me, brother.